Hey everyone, welcome to the round table in the kitchen. I'm with Paul Zoller. Uh, due to social distancing, uh, I'm not gonna be on the screen with Paul. I'm gonna introduce Paul. He's gonna come on in and he's gonna show you today in this recipe, we're going to make you a very special dessert. One that's near and dear to my heart, having Italian background. That special dessert is called panna cotta, which panna cotta means cooked cream in Italian, if you didn't know that. Panna cotta is one of those diverse, delicious, decadent desserts that you will really, really want to serve with your guests. It's quick, it's simple, it's easy, it's fast, and something that everybody will enjoy, especially the kids, because it's sweet. I'm gonna swap out now. Paul's gonna come on in. Come on in, Paul. Welcome back, everybody. So right now, we're going to be doing a maple panna cotta. Very beautiful, decadent dessert that can be topped with a whole lot of different ingredients. So first of all, I'm using just a simple frying pan. Uh, I have our cream here. I have milk here. Cream and milk. Cream and milk. We're doing mm. half and half. One part cream, one part milk. So we have one cup and one cup. Here we have some vanilla extract. If you'd like, you could use dark rum maybe some bourbon, whatever you prefer. Right here we have a uh, third of a cup of our wonderfully sourced Jakeman's maple syrup. Local Canadian and of course my family. What up, Jakeman's? Mm. And here we have our powdered gelatin. Powdered gelatin uh, is one of those things in this recipe that you do not want to have too much of. Having too much gelatin in a panna cotta means that you're going to overset it. Oversetting basically in a panna cotta is when it becomes too brittle. Oh, okay. What we want is we want a silky smooth thing that falls apart, but it isn't like a rock. My mouth is watering already. So <laughs> we gotta be really cautious with gelatin. Using too little means it's gonna come out like water. Using too much means it's gonna come out very firm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by adding half of our cream into our saucepan. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the blooming process. Blooming, so why, why is it blooming? So what happens with uh, gelatin is it needs to soften up before we start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do just an easy little sprinkling over top of our cream mixture. This is actually really cool because when I make panna cotta at home, I put it in a bowl and then I, I kind of whisk it together. This is, seems to be a much cleaner method to do it in the pan. Yeah. Because you're getting the surface area covered better. So. What we've done here is we've done that and you can see it starts to look like it has like a little bit of a skim to it. Oh so yeah, it just, yeah, yeah. Like that. So that's part of the blooming process and it's going to sort of turn into a gelatin. How long? So what we're going to do is we're just going to heat this up onto a medium heat. Uh, this medium heat is basically going to start softening up our gelatin. The big thing about softening up our gelatin is, is we're not looking to bring it to a boil. Bringing it to a boil is how you destroy gelatin. So we're just simply warming this up. Oh, yeah. We're not gonna cook it too much. And then this is going to actually set while we probably do our other things. And then we're going to bring this into the other part of our cooking method. All right, now what do you do? So that's gonna set while that's setting. So now while that sets, we're going to start in on the actual base of what we're doing here. So we're gonna have our nice pot here and we're going to uh, basically set this up at a low to medium heat again. And we're going to add in our milk. We're gonna add in our cream. Mixing it all together. We're gonna add in our maple syrup. Straight in, just like that. Just straight in. So basically what we're trying to do is get a nice flavor profile to be encouraged into our panna cotta. So we are, and this is a vanilla extract that we're gonna be using for this, uh, this bout. Keep stirring at a low pace, but we're gonna to try to make sure that it comes just to a soft, low boil. You're not gonna get it to a, like a raging boil? Right? No, because what happens when you uh, cook cream out, um, it's gonna like start rising up and spilling over top of the edge. And that's something you typically want to avoid. I love putting something crunchy with panna cotta. It adds the complexity of textures yeah. uh, that typically panna cotta really thrives with. So right now you can you can see it's starting to move around quite a go. bit and it's uh, it's starting to get to that stage. Oh, yum. So now we know that this mixture here is gonna be hot enough to dissolve our gelatin in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove it off the heat 
And I'm using an induction burner it's here. It's good to constantly stir because then you're not letting it stick to the, to the bottom of the pan. Yeah. And so as you can see, uh, our bloomed gelatin here has sort of set up a nice thickened mixture. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this gelatin mixture and we're going to shove that into our other liquids. Make sure you get it all because if you don't have the right amount of gelatin, it won't set properly. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is get as much of this gelatin in here as possible. And then from there, we can typically do a nice little mix around. And so classically, you could put this into a ramekin. Uh, you could put it into like martini glasses, champagne glasses, um, bowls, whatever you want. Now, the idea that we're working with gelatin means that it's gonna set up the way we chill it, which is kind of fun when we look at it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use some classic mason jars as an example, and I'm going to use a bowl as well because we're gonna show you a few different ways. So three separate ways we can do this. So you don't so, always have to use glass because that bowl is a... No, you don't have to always use glass. You can use a bunch of different things. The bowl itself is going to be used just to chill it, but we're going to do a deconstructed version of taking this out of the bowl and we're going to be putting it onto a plate. So a little bit of a nicer plating style. And then yet again, you could do the exact same idea with this version, which is what I've done is I've taken a mason jar here and what I'm doing is I'm tilting it onto the side. You're using so, tin foil for that to keep it? Yeah, you can use tin foil, you could use eggshell cartons. Um, and then what we're doing here by putting it onto the side, when we pour our mixture into here, it's gonna be slanted. And then when that cools off and you put it back straight up, that slant is gonna stay, which means that you can beautifully put all these other ingredients on the side huh. and stack it up beside it. Presentation. So it adds a beautiful presentation for what we wanna do. And then obviously you can have your standard classic presentations of these items here. You can layer just, it with berries, just sauces. Saying, standing straight up and so forth. All right. Uh, just so you can sort of have a good idea. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slowly add in our panna cotta mixture and it's gonna just tilt up onto the side like this. There Beautifully. And then I'm going to do our, um, our uh, standard mixture. So I'm curious as to this giant bowl is gonna make it very, I'm, I'm really curious to see how this one's gonna pan out because usually when I do it, I'm, I'm, I'm limited to ramekins. I never thought about putting it into mason jars, but a martini glass would make sense too. That'd be a really nice, fancier presentation. Of course, if you got kids at home, Stick to the stick to the classics. Stick to things that you know, their plastic bowls and stuff, especially depending on how young they are. So you see the tilt on the mason jar, how that's going to set up mm -hmm. sideways. You have your two flats, um, so those will set up just like that. And then obviously you have your the sideways one, and then you have our standard bowl. So now that we've got these all set up the way they are, what happens next? We have to chill them, right? Yeah, we're, we're gonna take these guys here and we're gonna shove these guys into the refrigerator overnight and we're gonna let these guys set up. Uh, like I said, you can do it in four hours. Typically four to six, yeah. Four to six hours is your, your good, good time. I personally like to make this the day before to make sure it sets up properly. Um, you don't need to put any like plastic wrap like right over top of it. What the big thing here is that you're going to have uh, that that gelatin start to set up. What we don't want to do is steam it out. So typically I, I like to let this cool down a little bit first to get sort of down to like a, a room temperature kind of feel. a room temperature before I would wrap it and put it in the fridge. If you want to do this really quickly, you can put it into the fridge let it cool down once it stops steaming and, and, and is nice, good room temperature. Then we'll take this and we'll wrap it up, not against the skin of the actual panna cotta, but just over top of the actual container. Uh, we have had a whole night to let this panna cotta set. Paul's gonna come back in. He's gonna show you fancy ways and easy ways to dress the different types of uh, pourings that he did on the panna cotta. Of course, at the end of this video, there'll be a call to action at www.roundtablekingdom.com and on our Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash Lindvand uh, Roundtable uh, Kingdom. You can go there and you can check out everything you need to see um, and find out how you can participate in the panna cotta kits as well as the lemma spread kits 
and I believe our Apple Butter Kits. So take a look up there. There will be more videos coming too. If you like this, please, please spread the word. Let people know all about it. And I'm gonna send this over to Paul now. And ooh, look at these delicious fruits. Paul, you wanna come on in and uh, show us how to finish the panna cotta? So what I'm gonna show you is a few different ways. Obviously, I'm not going to go with the traditional of the unmolding of the panna cotta. And so what we got here is we're actually going to be using uh, a few different uh, fresh ingredients plus some dry goods. So obviously we have our panna cottas, panna cottas that have set up overnight. Uh, and as you can see from some of them here, we have this one, which was the, the flat one. So it's set up straight. Oh, neat. And then we did the one that was tilted when we set it in. And so with this one, you can actually see oh. that it actually set up sideways. So Fancy. this is kind of neat because if you do it with a champagne glass or a martini glass or a nice looking glass where you can set it up sideways, um, then you can have that beautiful effect of a, an angular dessert. Instinctively, we always eat with our eyes first. So you may have something that's swimming in a pile of grease. It's not gonna look as appetizing as something that's beautifully composed. I mean, that's that's the beauty of being a chef. Is it is the, art. The fact that we get to, you know, express yeah, ourselves in what we do. Um, and it should be no different than you at home, um, doing something at home for a loved one or whatever, being able to express your love and appreciation for that person by just making it a little bit nicer. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with our, our uh, special panna cotta here. So what I've done is I've basically set this up overnight. And then as you can see, I kind of scored it with a knife a little bit into odd shapes. This I'm most curious about. So what I've never gonna, seen panna what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our plating. And what we want to do is we have some of our lovely apple butter here. Oh. Um, I've put it into a piping bag. And then what I've got is a ramekin or you can use a cup or whatever, but it has to have a sheer flat bottom. Uh, no edges or ridges or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an off-center um, dollop of the apple butter. So dollop, what did you just do there with the little bag? You got a little bag. Little bag has apple butter in it, just a tiny cut at the end. And you take it off the top. And I've piped up this little piece here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flat bottom of my ramekin and then I'm just going to press it down into the middle of it. And then what I'm going to do is holding the plate down, I'm just going to lift straight up and it gives a nice, neat little design that we're gonna be working with. So with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working around it. We're gonna start placing some of our strawberry pieces in different ways. Take some of our panna cotta here, and we're gonna just put it into nice little pieces all around the plate. I've actually busted up a bunch of Cinnamon Toast Crunch cereal. Oh, yeah, God. you're gonna say, why no, would you do that? No, 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 I totally get this it. This is to enhance our textural profiles, get that nice little crunch, get it to look nice. It also adds a nice cinnamon, fl uh, cinnamon flavor that uh, basically is going to complement the, um, the actual maple panna cotta because it's also a dark sugary brown. You gotta have fun with it. You gotta have a little bit of creation, a little bit of expression, and just sort of uh, oh, no, don't, wor right. don't worry about making mistakes or whatever. Sometimes it's good to just place things as they lie. I typically like to do this uh, a la minute, nice and fresh, beautiful, uh, vibrant, and this way you're not going to be um, letting things go to the wayside and uh, maybe uh, going awful. But Who's hungry? Who wants a piece of that? Um, nom nom nom. We can also do same sort of ideas with uh, the angular one. I usually like to put like a little bit of the uh, 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 dry mix uh, down into the bottom. And then you can put a few of your fresh berries into here, make it look really nice. So this one here, we have the angular side. So you can see that it's sort of set up against the side, beautifully set. And then you have your stuff in the middle as well. And you get a nice even distribution. So you can stick your, your spoon in, you can scoop it all from the side. Yeah, you can basically go at any side that you want. So, and it's the same with uh, doing things from uh, the bottom as well. Just something simple as, you know, we'll just cut up a few strawberries, maybe a half a blueberry or two. And then, you know, we can even go at putting the apple butter down on the base a little bit. Uh, give it a little bit of a nice sweet, sweet and spice component to it. And it'll be a nice little surprise underneath when they go to eat it. Here we have our three diff different versions of panna cotta. 
all with the exact same ingredients, just playing with the mediums we have. Well, well I hope you enjoy this recipe uh, and definitely stay tuned for more. Thank you so much.